if you had never seen a bow weevil, here's one. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, I've carried this, I, we're, we're going to bury this, this green bow weevil somewhere someday. The weevil is a devastating uh, insect. Uh, and if you're going to continue to be in the cotton business, if you want to grow cotton in the future, uh, that, that we cannot let this weevil reinfest the cotton fields. In the 1800s, cotton production represented a significant economic driver in the economies of southern states, especially for rural areas. When the boll weevil entered the lower Rio Grande Valley of Texas in 1892, cotton producers found themselves facing an enemy capable of destroying their entire crop. If you've never seen it, it might be like I was in 1965 when I was surprised to see what was going on in those fields uh, after we'd been scouting for weeks before we really noticed any of that, that big outbreak. And if you hadn't been through it, it's probably hard to understand. <clears throat> but it was a it was a fight. I mean, um, you know, every week. You know, late in the season, August and September was off. You just, you couldn't go in the field without just bow weevils being all over you. You could literally see 100% damage in the field. Every square, every bloom, every bowl in the field infested with bow weevils. And I don't think any other pest today has that, has that potential to cause damage. I have a map in my briefcase that shows the, the, the path of that bow weevil as it traveled into Texas from Mexico. And when you see that track of the bow weevil uh, and you see where it came from and you see the dates on that map that show how long it took to get from South Texas to the Carolinas, uh, it would scare you to death. One single invasive pest began a march across the southern United States destroying farms and local economies along its path. No one could escape the boll weevil's impact. Bankers, merchants, landowners, cotton gin and mill operators, everyone was affected. Banks reported the first year of boll weevil invasion in their area slightly affected deposits. However, in the second and third years, significant reductions in deposits were shown. Farm laborers moved northward seeking employment as banks and merchants began eliminating cash advances on crops. The records documented chaos as owners lost land and homestead, tenants were not paid, and a period of great poverty and distress encompassed all classes of agricultural people. Texas offered a reward of $50,000 to anyone who could identify a way to eliminate the boll weevil. The reward was never collected. States began holding prayer meetings, asking God to spare them from the coming boll weevil devastation. From 1892 until 1918, farmers struggled to preserve cotton production using cultural and mechanical practices to battle the boll weevil. Various studies suggest the boll weevil was responsible for annual losses of $200 million. Documents show farms, homes, and even entire towns were abandoned. A widely reported quote stated, When the boll weevil arrived in America, cotton moved west, cattle came east, poor folks went north, and the economy went south. The introduction of insecticides in 1919 helped many producers, but was too late for many others. Still, the losses grew as the weevil continued in its march. Over a period of 30 years in the early 1900s, the boll weevil spread and established from Texas to North Carolina. Cotton production became heavily reliant on the use of pesticides, particularly to battle the boll weevil as it developed resistance to early pesticide products. The relentless and intense challenge to produce cotton with the presence of the boll weevil for over 60 years received a massive call to action in 1958 as Dr. Robert Bob Coker, a businessman and cotton producer from Hartsville, South Carolina, and J.F. McLaurin co-authored and sponsored a 1958 resolution at the National Cotton Council's annual meeting calling for the development of technology to eliminate the boll weevil as a pest of U.S. cotton at the earliest possible date. The unanimous adoption of the resolution was met by a standing ovation of leadership from the cotton industry. Twenty years prior to the development of an eradication program, the United Cotton Industry leadership embraced the monumental challenge of boll weevil eradication. Following the passage of the boll weevil elimination resolution, National Cotton Council leadership, led by Mr. Coker, spent considerable time educating Congress on the need of boll weevil elimination. In 1960, Congress appropriated $1.1 million for construction of the new USDA Agricultural Research Laboratory at Mississippi State University, 
and $165,000 in initial staff funding. The research for boll weevil elimination experienced rapid growth, as did congressional appropriations. In 1961, the goal of boll weevil eradication was included in the speech of President John F. Kennedy. The support was solidified as scientists developed and conducted area-wide eradication studies and eventually a large-scale pilot study. With encouraging results of the pilot study, the 1978 president's budget included funds for a pilot eradication trial launched in Virginia. By the end of 1979, only two weevils were captured with fall trapping, and producers declared the trial a success. Growers in the eradication area experienced 60 to 90 percent reduction in foliar pesticide application. Oh, let me tell you, it used to be in our state that we spent more money on insecticides in cotton than any other crop. That has totally changed. And if I remember right, the number we had an 86% decline applications in the state of Arizona. Due to the success of the pilot eradication program, the U.S. National Boll Weevil Eradication Program was launched as a partnership between U.S. growers, USDA, APHIS and Congress. Anytime that uh, an industry can offer up 70% of the cost of any kind of program, uh, it's kind of like a grant. If you can get a 70% grant and your match is 30%, uh, why wouldn't you do that? We've been very, very fortunate to have partnered with USDA APHIS and uh, the federal government on a 30% cost year. The largest eradication program in history gained support and personal engagement of producers across the U.S. cotton belt. As boll weevil eradication successfully eliminated the boll weevil across the U.S., we cut our insecticide use on cotton by 70 percent. I mean, it's it's the phenomenal environmental story that people don't. Uh, aside from being an economic success for us, it's an environmental story that we don't get out there enough. I was. Others were skeptical. This could actually be done, but it it was done, and it was a phenomenal effort. And we need to do everything that we can to uh, stay where we are as far as having to eradicate. But we know the benefits of it. <clears throat> in 1994, Georgia put in 17 new gins. And it was a direct response to the fact that we got rid of the bow weevil. The cotton industry recognized the potential challenge associated with a successful eradication along the border of Mexico. A binational engagement with Mexico was sought to prevent boll weevil migration back into eradicated U.S. lands. Collaboration with Chihuahua, Mexico resulted in successful eradication of the boll weevil and provided security for adjacent eradicated areas in Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. As a matter of fact, I farm organic. I feel that I'm probably the guy that benefited the most from the whole program, and everything worked out great. We eventually eradicated the weevil. I think we've eradicated for Nine or ten years now, it's been gone, and it's been a blessing. Now, the remaining area containing boll weevil populations is an area of the lower Rio Grande Valley of Texas and the adjacent area of northern Tamaulipas, Mexico. In 2016, the U.S. cotton industry recognized the continual challenge to complete eradication was associated with pest migration from Tamaulipas, Mexico. The entire cotton industry has identified the lower Rio Grande Valley of Texas as the national boll weevil buffer zone an area protecting the entire U.S. eradication efforts. The entire U.S. eradication effort faces a unique challenge to succeed in an area under different governmental jurisdiction, which also contains the remaining active boll weevil populations. The boll weevil buffer zone is of national importance to protect cotton producers, rural economies, and the federal investment in eradication in the rest of the U.S. The 2019 harvested U.S. cotton acreage exceeded 11 million acres, with approximately 200,000 acres remaining in the national buffer zone. This is a relatively small area protecting a massive investment. We just cannot lose this, this buffer zone from here to Texas. We just can't afford to because, you know, everybody's telling us how sustainable we have to be. To be sustainable, you have to have a program like this because this is what absolutely allows you to be sustainable. First of all, if, if we found some boll weevils, I would do everything in my power <laughs> to control them uh, so that they wouldn't spread. Uh, because, you know, I'm certain we don't want to go back to the environment we had, you know, prior to the eradication. If we don't stop it here, 
it will continue just like it did in the 1800s when it, it went in uh, basically out of Mexico and, and grew up through the United States and went all the way over just a matter of years uh, to infestation of the entire country. The National Buffer Zone represents the battlefront line that must be maintained as cooperation with Tamaulipas, Mexico, enables completion of the U.S. eradication of the boll weevil. All accomplishments of the boll weevil eradication program will be lost without full support of the National Buffer Zone.